am working in the kitchen today processing some spaghetti squash that has been in the storage closet for pantry for quite some time. Um, it was actually, I think, harvested in April, so about six months to be exact. Probably a little long on the storage side for squash, uh, but I am still making the most of it and working with it today to make sure that it doesn't sit any longer. So here's the hazard. Certainly spaghetti squash is good to be stored in a pantry for two to three months, um, ideally. It is still usable, I've found, even after five to six months, which is what usually happens in our house because I get so much of it and my husband actually doesn't like it. <laughs> so between the time it takes to prep, you know, 45 minutes or more, it's one of those things that you can't just pull out and be like, oh, I'm gonna have spaghetti squash tonight. It takes a little planning and just the sheer amount of squash that we got this year meant that I had this entire Amazon box full of spaghetti squash. So I had about a dozen and that was not even counting what I gave away, but I wanted to talk you through an easy way to prep squash that it can go in the freezer and be used for soups. So spaghetti squash, if you have never grown it or cooked with it before, um, this is a very miniature version. So you may have seen it in the store more this size. It looks like a giant yellow football. And the cool thing about spaghetti squash is that when you bake it, uh, usually face down in some water, and you go to start at it with peeling it out with a fork, it actually takes on the texture of spaghetti. Some of them are old enough that they didn't look as much like noodles, but that's okay because it can still be used like squash puree. So spaghetti squash is a great thing to use as a substitute for any recipe that you have that calls for noodles. Obviously that's why it's called spaghetti squash is it can be used in place of spaghetti. I have also used it for other recipes. There's a wonderful buffalo chicken casserole recipe that I have made that I absolutely love. I will track it down. It's from Real Food with Jessica, so I will track it down and put it in the comments of this video. That's a wonderful way to use it that is not even remotely spaghetti related, um, but has a yummy taste. My husband doesn't love the texture, so that's why he's not a big fan. So you do have to get past the fact that it is not actually a noodle and does have a little bit more of a squash texture, but I love them. Um, I'm not going to use the space in my garden this year, again, next spring, to grow them. They require a ton of space because they vine, so I'm actually just gonna throw some guts that I have from some of my other little guys. I'm gonna use the guts, throw them out, and see if they want to turn into a vine out in our little field behind the house that isn't used for much of anything else besides being a little bit of a cactus garden. So, I know that's a lot of intro for what is actually going to be a super easy process, believe me. All you have to do with spaghetti squash, and again, mine have been in storage for a very long time, so they are hard. <laughs> so, a Perfectly ripe spaghetti squash will be pretty easy to cut in half. When they've been stored, as long as mine have, they get really hard, almost like a gourd. You wanna make sure you have a really sharp knife. I usually just place my knife in. This feels like a very good Halloween picture right here. <laughs> I very carefully, very carefully cut it in half which is gonna be, of course, challenging with this one. Then you have the guts inside just like you would a pumpkin.
take a spoon, scoop out all those guts, and you're left with kind of a little squash boat. All you have to do, put those in a pan, face down in about an inch of water because the water will evaporate as it bakes. You can also brush it with olive oil, which I did for these, mainly because they're so hard and my first batch didn't cook up in the 45 minutes and I ended up putting olive oil on them and they softened much faster. I also turned the oven up to 425. So my recommendation, 425 degrees, about 45 minutes, and then you can check and see if it's soft enough to start scooping out. I have four different pans in the oven, so I will show you those in just a minute. And once they're done, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the size of the squash, I take them out. I'm actually letting mine sit for a while and cool. Take your fork, start to scoop. And this is, an, so this is definitely one that sat long enough that it is just turning into kind of a squash puree versus the little stringy noodles. That's okay. They can be used for soups. So I would blend it up anyway. It's kind of nice that it ended up without all of that striation because then it'll be a little less pulpy. I even taste tested it earlier. It's pretty darn good. I've already had this one in the freezer for just a little bit, but all I did was take all of the insides from the squash. I put it down in some water to get all of the air out of the bag or as much as I could. So if you submerge a Ziploc bag in water, it will help seal it. So I get it almost all the way sealed, stick it down in some water, it pushes all the air out, and then I seal it the rest of the way. I have labeled it Squash 107, which is a little bit misleading considering this is six month old squash. <laughs> I'm gonna press it down, I'm gonna put it in the freezer, and then next time I want to make squash soup over the winter when it's actually cold because I think it's about 90 degrees here in Texas today. When it actually gets cold, I will take this out. I will puree it um, a little more in the blender and make soup with it. And it'll be a nice cozy dish, very nutritious for winter months. So a dozen spaghetti squash that I stored entirely too long, still good still being used and, and that's what I'm doing today. So hope you enjoyed this little tip on spaghetti squash. Maybe if you've never grown it before, you'll think about growing it next year. Make sure you have lots of space and watch for squash bugs, which is what happened at the end of my season. But otherwise, super easy vegetable to grow. I do not have a wonderful green thumb and I've grown these two, three years in a row and always had great success with them. Um, except when it comes to getting to my husband to eat them. So uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to Part-Time Pastures for more homesteading adventures. Uh, oh, and one more tip. After you've scooped out the squash, you can put this in the compost pile, which is what I'm doing with these. Recommendation on things like this one where I'm not scooping it out, I do not put these in the compost pile because squash will grow, what's that saying, bloom where you're planted? Squash will grow wherever you put it. So I have gotten squash growing in my compost pile before that I didn't necessarily want. So why waste it? I'm gonna throw it out in an area where I'm totally fine if it decides to grow and take over. So that's a tip. Um, definitely put your shells in the compost bin your rinds, I guess, would technically be the right word. Um, it is, spaghetti squash is a fun thing to actually make a recipe and serve in the little boat. So there's lots of recipes you can find where you just make use of the entire squash as a serving dish. So now I'm really done. Have a great day.